I'm up here. I've been up here for a couple hours with Frankie and Bobby and Crow and I was gonna have Frankie. This will be like the little last video of the few days. Frankie, sing that song for me. The one you were singing. Sing the one that you were singing. Remember to get take to get take this uh, get dedicated to uh, Roger singing the our, our uh, what's the song real quick about 30 seconds. It's called like Elvis Presley. I want you. I need you. I love you. It's uh, reversed to always a middle class person in the street. It doesn't matter. One of the one of the top singers in there. Uh, I want you. I need you. I love you. Sing it, Frank. Hold Jesus close. Hold Jesus tight. Let him through the old delight. Let him know that it's him. You're standing for us. Jesus wants you. Jesus needs you. Jesus loves you. With our hope, he is our hope. Will I stop? I could leave. Without Jesus, until he saved my soul. But now I know that I heard it was real. The love of Jesus eternally. Won't you please see Jesus? He'll never leave you alone. Jesus dies every time. You're a poor heart. Jesus wants you. Jesus needs you. Jesus loves you. With our heart, his heart. Uh, this is for the uh, unspoken dead. Evelyn, you're on. Okay. Yes, she watches all the videos, but she doesn't want to be on. Bobby, Frankie, uh, I'd like... Thank you, Evelyn. I want Bobby to share. I want Bobby to share a word. About the only thing I really got to say today, I was glad to go to Church Without Walls Church yesterday to see a friend of mine, Robert Shaw, and his wife Patricia get married. Oh, okay. And there's something that um, Henry Schultz, the deacon of the church, said a while back that I've really been thinking about a lot. Let's focus a little bit. Excuse me. On what the good Lord is doing, not what yeah. the bad guy is doing. What do you got to do? You yeah. have a coupon to get one? Um, keep, I had the coupon. Keep looking towards the Lord because He's the Lord's so Savior. Oh. The Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Just focus a little on what the yeah, good Lord is doing, uh, not what the bad guy is doing. Uh, uh, I like I that. Get to the I'm going to one time. You're, I'm going to give Mary and Crow a ride. I can give you a ride to the VA if you need it. Okay. I try to be seen and talk. God bless you, I God bless you Bobby. To say, why would I be any different here? Do I see anything that's maybe a lot? Just sometimes I do wonder when. And I got him straight. There's no way I could take more than next person. Man, when I see him coming, I'm happy. The horsepower, whatever it is, I can go with that or that water, and you never forsake it because I'll be the same person. But you know what? It's like, like Moses. Better believe that. The chosen people. Amen. And Frankie, chosen people. Frankie was speaking in tongues earlier, just worshiping. Bro, bro, what you got? Anything? It's a good day. The okay. full moon is a good day. Hey, you can have a craftsman tool for 20 years and break it and take yeah, it back uh, in and say, shit, pooch. all they do is give you another one. <laughs> the pooch got mad. They were getting, the dogs were getting a little bit of fights today. All right. I get crow on. Mary, you can be on if you want. A lot of times people don't like to be on the videos. Let me make sure I get crow. Uh, yeah, it's a good day. Uh, you got to, uh, I finally got to show you who Alan was, yes. Apostle Alan. Yes. Last time my mind was a little lost, I'm like, who's Alan? <laughs> and you must have thought, John's not all there, he's talking about <laughs> Alan. But yes, Alan actually talked on the video the other day. If he was still here, uh -huh. I'd have him share again. He took off, Alan. Yeah, we were talking about tools earlier, and uh, um, you know, uh, I, I was surprised how open he was. You know, and I was thinking, I, I was going to ask him, but I didn't want to insult him. And, uh, that's why I asked earlier when he walked by. Is this that, that possible? Yeah, that's him. So, uh, uh, yeah, I uh, finally get to, get to I've known him, talked to him for a while. I've known him for a while, but I didn't know that was him. Yes. You know, I like that whenever you find out that uh, you know, somebody that you, you like and, and, and is knowledgeable is, uh, turns out to be more than what they, you know, you thought they were. Yes. That's always a good thing.
Yeah. Alan has been around for years, and a lot of people see Alan on the street because he basically is on the street. But he knows a lot of the preachers, pastors, and Alan's been in a lot of the churches where they've, you know, recognized him as an apostle and all. And so that's interesting to just see, to see that. Yeah. I'm uh, 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 really going to chew his ear off <laughs> next time I see him. I have a question for him. <laughs> Good. Uh, 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 I want to know his experiences uh, because you, you said one, last time I, uh, we brought him up, you were saying that... Uh, how he said that they, they opened the church and they won't see him, and then now he says, I don't, you know, they don't the one now around, and it's like, you know, uh, I'm sure he's got some insight into that. As yes. To, you know, uh, I know the feeling, so, yeah. uh, uh, but uh, not from his point of view, so I, I want to talk to him about that. And uh, also, um, uh, how he got his experiences, because obviously he's got some experiences. Yes. And, you know, uh, Alan told me this, Crow. And I've known Alan for years, and, and some of the discussions I've not videotaped, you know, he quotes a lot of scripture. Alan told me he's only read the Bible once through, that when he was first accepted Lord years ago in Corpus Christi, he got a Bible and he was homeless, and he read it through under the bridge. And sometimes he gave me a little verses he had the other day, but he said, if that's true, and I believe them, that would be a real gift for him to kind of be able to quote verses and all, and to have only read it one time, time. like that. You want to talk, Mary? I'll get you on. Some, some of the girls don't want to talk. That's Mary. All right. Um, Alan's been a blessing to me because I, being homeless, I've had to take a, a recoil of my life, of yeah. what, what led me here. And I've been able to go to him at, at the guide kind of type person yeah. and tell him, you know, this was my awakening last night or this is my awakening today. And he told me the other day that I needed to sit up, sit up and look at all of who I claim as friends okay. and take recognition of who are true friends and who are actually the snakes that are, are trying to to get to me. And I've, I've done that and I've, I've been able to make amends to people with his help and it's just been a blessing. To me. So in a way Mary Allen's kind of has a ministry even though people wouldn't think of it in that way but Norm he's, he's normally people wouldn't think of him as a minister or, or as ministry they um they think of him as crazy a lot I know um, yeah. but his words and his wording and his kindness and just his heart in, in general is it? it's, it's a it's a blessing to anybody that knows you, yeah. and whether they recognize it or not is a different thing. Yeah. But being able to say that he's helped me in my own mind, and in in sitting down and in taking, um, I I don't know the word for it. Uh, it's sort of like Henry Henry Schultz. He's been on the streets, but if if people talk to Henry, he's very they would never know. yeah, very knowledgeable and very sweet. And but you would think, because Henry looks like the part of being homeless, he's, Henry's been on some of the videos. But so you kind of don't judge by the cover. You I know? don't know. You can't yeah. judge by the cover because, like me, I've got three degrees. I've been homeless nine months. Okay, it, it's hard. It's very hard. Yeah. I mean. Um, and being a single female out here, you don't know who to trust and not to. Yeah. I'm, I was a nurse by trade, so okay. I, I, mean, I mean, I went from up here to down here, and I fell overnight. Yeah. And I've lost everything, and Alan's helped me deal with it yeah. without, like, like Crow told me earlier, he said, so are you going to get mad and fight? No, I'm not going to get mad and fight. You know, they must need it worse than I do, or they need the help more than I do, or whatever. God's got his own intention for me. Yeah. And I know that he's got me in this place because I had a lesson to learn. Yeah. I, I was very judgmental and very, very outspoken about my judgment. And I think that this is just a sombering, very sobering, very um, awakening yeah. experience. Do you, know, do you know David Martin? Uh, Mary, Andy and Yui's Andy brother, and David. Yui, yeah. You know, David, it reminded me. And I have not seen David in a while. But it reminded me that David 
told me when he, before David was on the streets and using methanol in this whole area, but he was very successful. And he used to see the homeless people all around the bluff, on the corners, and he told me, you know, John, I was so judgmental, I used to tell them, like, their Go pieces of shit and all. And then he said, I remember a lot of David's stories, but one day when he was on the streets, he was leaving, a mutual friend of mine saw him, I won't say the name, he was going down the stripes, and he had flip-flops on, little slippers, and he was coming back to go to his friend's house, and he fell in the street. He was using for years at that point. He was dirty, and he fell right past Timmons coming by, and it was like spring break, and all the people that were driving by, he said they looked at him like he used to look at the homeless, and he said he realized that he was the thing he kind of despised he became. That's why it's important. It's an experience. It, it's, a, it's a lesson, in my opinion, it's a lesson to be learned. Because everybody I know that's homeless was at one time either successful or very judgmental or abusive or, or whatever you want, you know. And it's a somber experience. It really is. It, it um, makes you wake up. Yeah. Especially those of us that don't drink. I mean, I've got my little qualms, but I don't want to be here. Yeah. I want. I deserve something better. Yeah. I. I. Everybody does. Each one of these people deserves something better. And we're all here by different situations. And of course, mine is choice because I'd rather be homeless and have nothing than to be tied down in an abusive relationship. Yes, a lot of that is the experience of the people on the street. And then shortly later, I lost my job, lived in my car with my kids. Okay. okay. Then my car broke down, so I sold it. So I was living on the streets with my kids, then ended up losing my kids, and I've, I've lost everything. Yeah. And I think it's because I was so frisky so um, spoiled, so whatever you want to call it, yeah. that I was hateful, judgmental, um, to a definite point. I mean, my words would literally shatter people. Yeah. And now I get it, and I get it, you know. Interesting. Yeah, I view it as like uh, God is uh, uh, the way I work with knife. You know, the, you, you know, you're giving it an edge and it's sharpening it, oiling it, and everything. And uh, that's the way I view it. Uh, that's what he's doing now. It's uh, uh, you may not always like it, uh, but um, it is what it is. And uh, you can either um, let it break you, defeat you, or um, or strengthen you and grow from it. Yeah. And, uh, that reminds me. That saying reminds me of Penny. Penny's a sweetheart. Now, everybody knows Penny, but Penny was going to the little Bible studies I was doing. And one day, Penny, uh, she checked into Charlie's place, did the seven days, and it was a Sunday morning, and uh, uh, she said, I'm going to get out Sunday, John. Will you pick me up at Charlie's? I said, I'll get you, Penny. And so I picked her up. She had seven days clean. She just did, you know, the uh, detox. But then on the way back to the bluff, we all were going to go to Rock City. This was a couple years ago, right? And she said, Brother John, would you uh, buy me a soda at Stripes? I said, oh, that's fine, Penny. We stopped at Stripes, got her a soda. Can you give me this candy bar here? I said, sure. Then we got in the car. We're coming back. Now, at that point, because she was not getting into what we call residential, meaning she only did detox, she was still going to have to do like eight months in jail at that point. And she said, well, Brother John, that's all right. I said, oh, Penny, but if you did the extra 30 days, the, whatever, she said, well, she, she said, it is what it is. And then she's eating the candy bar, and she's like, oh, this is so good. She was so happy. I said, Penny, if I was facing eight months, you know, as soon as they process her, I, see, I said, I wouldn't have been able to say it is what it is. I said, I wouldn't be able to feel like I wasn't condemning her. I was just saying I felt sad in a way that some people settle for you know, it, it's a certain way, and Mike, my artist friend, might see him in a little while, he said we accept the things, the AA thing, accept the things that, you know, you can't change, 
And I guess some people survive because they realize this is where I'm at now. I might not be able to change it today or this week, but a little bit at a time and hopefully, you know, you can get back sharpening the edge of the knife. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kid Crow. I'm going to tell her, I'm going to yeah. spill the beans on Crow. <laughs> Crow told me, yeah, a lot of my friends carry knives. Look, by the way, Austin, I have not seen him. I thought maybe he was in trouble. I heard he's with his dad back in the home, which is good because when I don't see the guys, I always wonder what happened to him. But um, one day, a friend said to Crow, because a lot of guys, look, you're on the street, you're going to carry knives because you're on the street. A lot of people, a lot of my friends have knives and all. Some collect them. And somebody said one day to Crow, look, you got too many knives. It's, you know, it's showing that you don't have trust in God by, and I've heard guys say this before. So Crow told me that. I said, yeah, he's probably right. Then like a week later, I'm giving Crow a ride. And, you know, as he's getting in the car, He's got about 15, well, maybe about 10, you know, knives on. I said, I guess you didn't take the advice. Look, they're all, there's nothing wrong with them, but it was funny because I think some people actually do do that. Out of, you know, you're on the street, there's a, few, a little insecurity, you know. And I'm a single woman out here. I mean, I'm by myself, yeah. me and my dog. That's Roger and somebody getting in the way. It's me and my dog out here, and yeah. that's all I have. What is the know? dog's name? The dog is Noah. Noah? Noah is a shelter dog. He oh. was found at North Shore on the beach oh, okay. in a box with five siblings. Okay. He was coming door to door to my RV, and oh. he was getting food, and he was taking this food and carrying it back to this box, and I wondered why. Well, I went back to the box with him one day, and there was five siblings there, oh. and four of the five siblings had already passed away. Oh. So he was trying to keep his brothers and sisters alive oh. by taking them food, and I hence. Oh. And it was raining that day, and the water was getting higher and higher and higher, and he was in that box at the edge of the water. And I'm like, Here, this is Noah's Ark, isn't it, Noah? Oh, I was going to say. So I named him after Noah's Ark, and then rain from the, the rainy, yucky day that we had. Oh. My daughters do the rescues. They're always posting, like, the dogs, too. And I have dogs at my house. We have lot. Our whole family probably has about 15 dogs, if you count all my daughters and everything. So they're really into it. I'm well, I have epilepsy, and I sent Noah to school to become a service dog. Noah, Noah gives me a warning that I am going to have a seizure. Oh. Wherefore, otherwise, I don't get a warning, and okay. I just fall out, and it happens. You had Mary. You, she had a seizure the other day. As a matter of fact, I mentioned we, me and Bobby, were praying for some ladies. Mary was one that we, me and Bobby, prayed for. So yeah, I have good. anywhere from 10 to 15 seizures a day. Okay. I mean, I, I uh, have all five types. Are you on the uh, phenobarbital? I take phenobarbital, or Tegretol, or, okay. phenobarbital, Tegretol, and um, what's the other one? Depakote. Okay. Um, phenobarbital is the one that helps me the most, and the Depakote is an anti-convulsion. So it keeps mm. me from having the convulses, whereas... Which is hence yes. the lighter seizures that, instead of bashing my head in. Yeah. Which I've done many times. Uh, the grandma versus the grandma. Yeah, it's, it's so grandma versus the grandma. Yes, uh, yeah, grandma. And I, I was EMT for 20, a firefighter 25 I have, years ago. But I have all five EMT. types of seizures. I have the ones where I spaced out, I have the sleeping seizures, I have the non breathing seizures. Listen, pray uh, for Mary. Yeah, I. I I, yeah, pray for me, please. Mm. Um, just keep me in your prayers. Constantly. I'm going to end with the prayer for Bobby. We're going to pray. Come here, Bobby. I'm going to pray at the end of the video. Let's just grab hands. I can't grab, bro. Father, I thank you for uh, just allowing us to have a little fellowship today. I pray you bless everybody. I pray that you heal Mary's body and lift her up to you. I pray that you strengthen Bobby, use him for his calling the ministry you got for him, working Crow's life, continue to uh, do things with Crow, bless Frankie, yeah, and just work with all of us, Lord, just just work, and I hear Roger in the back getting into it, so we pray for Roger, I've had a lot of time with Roger, and we just ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, that was it, nice little short.